Hi guys, it's Nancy Stamps for Fairy Stamper YouTube today, and I have been watching YouTube videos galore, and one of my friends, Brandy, made this amazing background, and I had to try to duplicate it. Now, I will warn you, there's a lot of uh, medium used in this background. Um, these are all Fairy Hugs stamps, um, and... Angela, I'll be honest with you, she's looking a little creepy here, okay? So I thought I could kind of replicate this background, but make it a little bit friendlier. Maybe we don't use Angela. We have some other stamps we can bring into this, okay? So I'm going to start with a piece of 5x7 Lavinia Stamps uh, card. This is the Multifarious card. Now, I will tell you guys, all this is is just a heavyweight um, card. It is super smooth, but if you have the Nina heavyweight, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, it's not not as porous or fibrous as opaque, um, but it's just a heavy duty cardstock. You can use mixed media cardstock, anything that you have, right? So a piece of that cut down to five by seven. Okay, and I am going to start with spritzing the background. So this is gonna get a little messy here. I have my little spritz box, which is just a, a mailing box, and I just have paper towels in there. And then every so often, I will um, just flip the paper towels over. They get nice and pretty. See, that's all we do, okay? And kind of stand my card in there. All right, so I'm going to be using Distress Oxide Sprays. I don't have any other Distress Sprays, only the Oxide Sprays. I don't know why I never really got into them. So when I started seeing everybody pull these sprays out, I was like, okay, let me see what I can do here. And I'm gonna start with some Squeeze Lemonade. Some dust on my cardstock there. And I'm just going to kind of put that right in the center there. And then we're going to go on the outside. And this is carved pumpkin. And you want to shake these up with the Distress Oxides because their pigment sits at the bottom. And I like the Distress Oxides because they layer very well on top of each other. All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of outline that yellow. So the yellow is still there, but we just have a little bit of orange on here. And then for our ground, now you may wanna dry this before you start adding colors that might not match. Also, don't be afraid if you have too much color to dab some of that up. If it's, um, you know, not the color combination you want, that's what's nice about Distress Oxides is you can continue to layer them. So for the ground, I'm going to go in with some Twisted Citron. Put that in there. And some Mowed Lawn. And again going to dry that. I'm going to bring some of my yellow back in. Brighten that center up again. And then I'm going to take, now don't think I'm crazy here, but I'm going to take a little bit of Wilted Violet, and I want just that on the top there. So I'm going to take just a piece of scratch paper, just kind of hold it up so it doesn't overspray too much. Just want a little bit there in the sky. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue drying this. Okay, so my panel's pretty dry now, and I just have some scratch paper underneath here and now we're going to start stamping our scene out so I'm going to start with our trees in the background this is called birch tree set and I'm going to be using my Versa Fine Claire inks because they're pigment inks so they go on nice and dark and again they layer 
on top of the Distress Oxide sprays. I'm going to start with some Fallen Leaves. You want to saturate that ink on the stamp pretty well. And give that a second for that ink to transfer over. And then I will take a ghost print over on this side or second print. See that? Okay. And there are two trees in this set and a little owl. I'm going to repeat the process with the other tree. The darker the ink, the more it looks like the image is in the foreground. So you wanna kinda of have that closer to you. And then the lighter the ink, it looks like the image is in the background. So when I stamp those, I move the stamp up a little bit. So it looks like they're further off into the distance when I do that second generation or shadow stamping. So we're gonna take this one now and move it over here, move it up a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Now with this same tree, I'm actually going to add some gray. This is Versafine Claire Morning Mist. This is a pretty light gray, it's not real dark. And again, just kind of stamp that up a little higher in the background a little bit. Okay, so we have our little forest. All right, my main focal image in this set is going to be this cute fairy condo. It's a giant mushroom with these cute little fairy houses hanging off of it. And for that, I do want to use my stamp positioner. I am going to bring in my Tim Holtz stamp positioner. I'm going to leave it on the rubber side. What I'm going to do is just take a little piece of foam and put that on there. I have not used this stamp yet, it's brand new. So to get conditioned your clear stamps, um, if you have an issue stamping them the first time, there's a really easy way to kind of prep them, condition them. So I'm gonna place it where I want it. It's gonna be right here in front. Okay, and I'm going to ink it up with some clear Versamark ink first. So what the Versamark does is it kind of fills in all of the imperfections on the um, stamp and it just helps it to accept ink a little easier. So before I stamp with it, being a clear stamp, the other thing you can do is rub your stamps with an eraser before you stamp with them. All right. And for this guy, I'm going to kind of stamp it in different colors. So for the top of the mushroom, I'm going to use Chianti. Okay. And that's going to be very careful, dark purple, all along the top of my mushroom here. And it's because 
pretty easy to see because this is a clear stamp where the ink is going. So I just have inked up the top. May have to stamp this a couple times because it's a pretty large image. All right, so I'm going to stamp that in place. And we'll ink it up again. And by keeping this on the rubber side and putting the foam underneath, it makes it a little easier to get an impression. All right, now we might have to come back and do that again. I'm gonna do the bottom portion in black. So we have Nocturne ink. We're gonna do that on the whole bottom of our mushroom. Where that black got on the edge. I'm just going to wipe that away with a little towel. Okay. Oh, my little magnets got in the way. Let me take those out and put them up here. Gonna have to take my magnets out and I think I just double stamped that yep I did okay so when that happens I can still clean this up I'm actually going to clean my stamp we're gonna have to manually stamp this if you make a mistake don't feel like you're everything's a waste we can always fix it I'm going to keep this foam here. I'm going to keep my image there. I'm going to use a pretty big block here. Don't get discouraged. We can always fix it. I'm going to go back in with our Nocturne ink. Re-ink all of that up. And now because it's see-through, you can carefully look through this and line it up. Let me give that a little extra pressure. Okay. That's actually not too bad. Okay, so now we have part of our background done. We have our main focal image done. We need to add some of the accessory pieces. And you'll see how this is all going to come together despite my little boo-boo there. This is the hanging vine. We're going to go in with some rainforest. And we're going to stamp these hanging vines everywhere. So multiple stampings. I'm actually going to add the other stamp on the back of my stamp block here so we can do both of them.
Okay, so we have our hanging vines coming down. We're gonna add some more foliage in here. We have the logs. small log. I'm going to stamp that one up in pine cone. Just going to stamp that right in front here. And then, of course, on the log and the ground, we need to have some mushrooms. These are the mini dancing mushrooms. A smaller block for that. I'm going to ink those up in the morning mist, the dark gray, or the gray, I should say. It's really not that dark. We're going to have some of those popping up right here in front of the log. Ooh, that's not dark enough. Okay, let's go in with fallen leaves again. We'll do those here. All this is is just adding little accessories in. We have some grasses here. This is the bulrushes or uh, what do I call them? Cattails. I'm going to stamp those in some shady lane. And then I have these, these are called wild leaves. I'm really just going to use the top part of these. And again, just going to grab some shady lane and just kind of throw these leaves in there. And they're just going to darken things up. You'll see a little bit of them, but you're not going to see a whole bunch of them. Just gonna again just add some more dimension to this so looks like we're in the forest. And there are two sizes. That was the smaller one. I'm gonna go with the larger one. And I'm gonna grab the other green, which was rainforest. And I know it looks like a hot mess. I promise it's going to get cleaned up here, guys. All right. So once all of those are done, we are pretty much done stamping most everything that we are going to stamp. We now need to go in and just kind of finish this off a little bit by adding some color. Cleaning up where our stamped images didn't stamp so well. So to do that... You can use colored pencils, you can use pan pastels. Again, use what you have. 
I'm going to be bringing in some pan pastels and I'm going to be bringing in some color pencils. So these are my color pencils. And the first thing I want to fix is my mushroom top just did not obviously stamp out well. It's just not dark enough. So we find a nice dark purple here. And all I'm going to do is just trace, replicate the art on there. I'm just going to take some little blending tools and that's going to pull off the excess color off the top of the pencil smear that in but it's still going to leave our lines there so we get a little bit of color but we still get the lines we don't lose the lines okay if you wanted to go in, add some pan pastels. And again, I, I know this is more mixed media than I normally do, but I really love the results that I kind of get doing this. So this is pan pastel and I have way too much on there. That's okay. I can go in and I can keep lifting it and rubbing that in. It's going to color in my image anywhere where I have too much. I can just take the clean part of the sponge and rub that off. It'll lift it right off. You can also use an eraser. Okay, so now we have the dark. I'm going to go in and do the stalk as well. And if you don't want to sit and watch the whole coloring, I know I don't generally watch people color, you can tap the right side of the screen on YouTube and it'll fast forward in 10 second increments. If you miss something, you can quickly tap the left side of the screen twice, so two short taps, and it will rewind 10 seconds for you. So if you want to just get to the final outcome, you can fast forward the video. If you miss a step and you want to know how I did it, just hit the rewind 10 seconds back and it'll go back and play that for you. Okay, so now I have my color. It's definitely more opaque now. Some of the spots are coming through from the Distress Oxides, but it actually is giving it some cool dimension. So kind of like it there. I'm not going to mess with that. But you can see how the coloring is coming together now. And I know a lot of us have a lot of mixed media. We have inks, we have markers, we have color pencils, we have crayons, you know, use what you have to just to kind of go in. It's, it's, it's a little soothing sometimes when you get a chance to just sit down and color. And I, I'm not a huge fan of coloring. So to be able to do this, this is fairly quick too, you guys. I mean, you're not going to, depending on how much time you might have to sit down and, and do it and walk away from it and come back to it later, or you can, can do it pretty much in one sitting like I'm doing here. I mean, it's just taking your time and deciding how far you want to go with it. How much do you want to add to your image? And 
And the, the beauty of using pan pastels and color pencils is if you don't like something, just erase it. Takes it right out. Some of this is not dry enough yet, so the color pencil is not sticking. So I might have to take the heat tool to this to get it to dry a little bit more. But you can see how it is coming together for the ground. is you guys know I can't make one of these without gel pens I'm gonna just take the heat tool and dry this real quick okay so I dried that a little bit I'm gonna go in with my, my little gel pens in here just add and accentuate anything that I feel like needs it so like these mushrooms they need to have little dots on them
would be my dog. Sorry. <laughs> That's Mr. Leo wanting to be in the video. All right, now for the mushroom, I'm gonna go with a white gel pen first, see if I can color in those spots. Actually, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna use white chalk pencil. Just to give it a layer to sit on before we add any color to it. All right, I think we are coming along pretty nicely here. I am going to try to s speed this along. I know you guys have been patiently watching. I appreciate that. I, I cannot sit and watch a coloring video. So the fact that if you are still here hanging out, thank you so much for that. I just, I don't have the patience to do that. So thank you for doing that. And I'm just going in and again, just adding some color, accentuating where these trees would be in the background. A little fallen log here. And I'm going to actually grab a little dauber. And this should work because it's pigment ink. This is Versify and Claire Summertime, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that ink and go right into where our spots are on our mushroom.
Okay. And again, you can go in and continue to add more detail. everything is dry. Some of my stuff is not dry yet. We'll go back in once that's dry. And then the last thing that I would add to this are some edging and some sun rays. So I'm going to start with some edging here. I'm just going to grab my pan pastels again. this purple again and just gently come in and just pull that color down that might be a little too much color that's okay just so we have this kind of vignette the darker colors on the outside now for the part where there's too much color again I can just go in and take it out lift it out And then the last thing that I learned that I loved the best out of watching these videos is to add a little bit of sun rays. Like we want to bring this look in. So I'm going to go back in and grab a clean tool and we're going to go in with some light yellow. And we're just going to bring that in real soft and you want the 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 brush lines in there because that makes it more realistic That is my fairy condo scene. I know this is a rather long video for me. I hope you guys enjoy watching it. I would just go back in then and continue to touch up with my gel pens on anything I felt like needed some additional accents. It's taking gold pen, going in and touching up our little mushroom spots. No, and you just make it work. And so a lot of mediums used there from sprays to pan pastels to gel pens. But hopefully you had some fun coming along with me. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, I will post the stamps that I use down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, after video extra bonus here, I totally forgot to add the little fairies. To their little homes so these are called condo dwellers so we're going to sample a couple of these guys on here I'm using versafine clear nocturne ink again and we just we just need a couple of these gals on here right we can't have them in the woods not going home after hard day of ferrying, fairy foraging, and what else do fairies do? I don't know, tooth ferrying, and animal hanging out, and whatever they do, make dreams come true.
and again I'll let that dry and then I'll go in and I'll put a little shimmer in their wings so you can see them I'll probably take a black jelly roll pen and outline them so they really pop but that finishes off our five by seven fairy condo dwelling again all of these stamps can be picked up at fairy hugs go check them out all made in the U.S. high quality photopolymer stamps and I think that came out pretty good despite all of my boo-boos can't tell I covered them all up now I will mention because this has pan pastels on it I will spray this with a clear fixative a clear Krylon spray which is like a clear uh, spray paint so it will lock everything in so I don't have to worry about any of that pan pastel uh, lifting out of place you can see the gel pens, um, how they shimmer and glow. And I think that came out pretty darn good. Once again, thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.